I want to make sure that we are looking at the role that technology can play in helping to address issues of equity. And I don't think we talk enough about it. And so I'm going to talk about that for a few minutes today and hope that that becomes a pervasive part of the conversation for the rest of the day today and as you uh, leave here. I'm going to present five opportunities that I believe technology brings to closing some persistent uh, equity gaps, challenges that we have in this country. The first is technology brings equitable access to high quality digital learning materials. Since 1978, there's been an 812% increase in the price of college textbooks. Do you know that a third of students today don't even buy textbooks? They're too expensive. This student here, Johnny Lazzarini, says it uh, well. He says, when I look at it, a syllabus and it says required text, I think in my head, oh, that's adorable. <laughs> there are some options for how technology can help solve this problem, because students are going into debt over trying to buy textbooks that, by the way, are already out of date by the time they get them. There's a great movement underway called Open Educational Resources. Hopefully everybody in here is familiar with the idea of OER. And the idea of saying, what does it look like? What would it look like if we made the access to the information and content that we need for teaching and learning free, just like the access that we need for teaching and for all the other parts of our lives, right? All the other information that we get and that we need to be successful. You know, when I came on the map that I used to get here in the morning, the information about the metro, to get, all the information in our lives is open and free, except when it comes to when we go into a learning space, which, by the way, is where the most information is uh, available for free, and yet that's where we're not taking advantage of it. The Department of Education has an interesting project called the Learning Registry. The best way to describe this is this is the, the Human Genome Project for Open Educational Resources. We're trying to categorize all of the open resources and make them available freely to any tool that wants to pull from this database. There are a number of tools that have already done that. This is one called free.ed.gov that you can take a look at. There's another one uh, called Illinois Shared Learning Resources. This is my digital chalkboard, which is California's uh, new tool that's pulling from the learning registry. The point is that if we can look at finding ways to take advantage of these uh, open resources, we can do some amazing things. Second thing, opportunity to address equitable access to expertise. Um, too many of our students are disadvantaged purely based on the zip code that they happen to live in. When I worked for Senator Patty Murray, we had a uh, small town in Washington State where they had a math teacher position posted for five years. Now, this wasn't they were like being picky and not accepting the math teachers that were coming. This was an open position for five years that they were waiting for somebody to apply to, right? Uh, that's challenging when you think about what those students were expecting from their education experience. This is a uh, town called Polvadera, New Mexico. Polvadera was one of the stops on uh, the back to school bus tour this year that the secretary uh, made. Polvadera, as it turns out, actually has high, high quality schools. Uh, but sometimes this is a number game. And in a town where the total population of Polvadera is 414 people, you can imagine what the you know, graduating class looks like or what their entire high school size looked like. And so students in Polvadera that are expecting to take Russian or AP computer science might find themselves a bit out of luck if it were not for technology as an opportunity to bridge that gap. These are some students that I met in uh, Sunnyside, Arizona, and you, you're seeing them in their bioengineering class. Now, I don't know how many of you had bioengineering even as an option when you were in high school. I certainly didn't. But they are in their bioengineering class, and they were able to go through and uh, basically take the, the, the project that you're seeing them work on is they're doing a genome study. They're t t capturing the genomes of all of the indigenous plant life uh, in the region. And they're doing it by being connected to uh, university researchers uh, from a local university that are helping step them through this, this project. Right, that's because technology is enabling that access to expertise. Opportunity three, personalizing learning. Personalizing learning has become a bit of a buzzword in education, but at the end of the day, it's really about equity. <coughs> One of the least equitable things we do in education is treat all students the same. Personalized learning gives us the chance to address the fact that students have different needs and backgrounds and passions and interests, and our ability to provide them education that adapts to that should also adjust and change. Personalized learning means adjusting the pace, adjusting the path, and tying the learning experience to interests and expertise of students. It's pretty amazing if you've ever seen this happen. Here's, a, here's an example of a school that I got to visit where 
students are doing work and they do some work that's technology based, they do some work in group projects, and then based on how they did that day, the next day, their schedule and their classes and the activities they go to are automatically reassigned. They get customized schedules every day based on how they did the day before. Pretty amazing to have technology play that role. The Department of Ed is doing some work right now to uh, have personalized learning model districts across the country, and we're investing heavily in the ability to do that. Opportunity number four is support planning for higher education. Higher education in this country is a bit like, if you anybody watches Pirates of the Caribbean, it's a bit like the Isla de Muerta, right? If you ever know, you know the deal, like you only knew how to get there if you'd already been there. Um, that's a lot like higher education in our country. You know how to do it if you've already done it. And so if you haven't already done it, it's pretty dang hard to navigate. And just talk to students that are here in the first generation trying to get into college and see what they say. There are uh, very few tools that are available to help them make that transition. And so one of the projects that we did was something called an Education Data Palooza. And we said, we're going to bring in a whole bunch of people who know how to code and build apps, and we're giving them a bunch of open data, and we're going to say, will you build tools that make it easier for students to navigate this crazy process of getting into uh, college? And guess what they did, and they were awesome. I don't have time to tell you about them, but you can go search for them on the web, but there's a whole bunch that say, hey, here's how much college actually costs, because by the way, the sticker price on college is entirely deceiving. And you have students that are going to colleges that are actually costing more and aren't nearly as good because they think that they're gonna pay more to go to the other college that they got into. We brought all these developers in, they got to have this big fair and they showed uh, the secretary and a whole bunch of people the tools that they created, but we now have a whole series of tools out there that are available to help students navigate this crazy process. Number five, supporting accessibility. Uh, for this one, I wanna actually, instead of me explaining it, turn it over to the words of a student uh, and have him explain it for us. Hi, my name is Kyle Weintraub. I'm a seventh grader at David Posnack Jewish Day School. Like my Posnack experience is unique because I go to school through a robot. I am being treated for lymphoma in Philadelphia. Arriving visitor, Kyle is about to arrive. Without the robot, I would be in school without any interaction. I wouldn't see my friends, I wouldn't be doing much at all. When I discovered that there was a student at our school that was diagnosed with cancer, I wanted to do something to help him stay a part of our Pothneck family. I would raise the money to get a robot that would let him interact with his friends and still learn at our school. I have been through a lot. This robot has really impacted me tremendously. Without it, I would probably not be in school. Without the robot, I would not have access to my old life, my friends, or my studies. Life would be awful without the robot. I have infinite gratitude for it. I can honestly say that I, I truly think that it's the Vigo saving Kyle's life because if it wasn't for the Vigo, we probably wouldn't have stayed here for treatment in Kyle. I don't know what would have happened. Um, it really gave him the security and the sense of belonging and continuity that he needed. Kyle has left the building. That video, by the way, was part of a student film festival. We asked students from across the country, we were, we were having the conversation about how technology could be helpful, and we said, uh, the, the conversation was mostly adults going around saying, here's how students you know, like to use technology. And we said, well, <laughs> we're gonna try something really crazy. What if we just ask students to tell us what they think about using technology? And, and we had this film festival. Uh, we had uh, 3,000 videos submitted from students, created by students talking about how technology could make a difference in their life or in their future. Um, but one of the things that was interesting is most of the the videos had a theme of equity throughout them. And we didn't set that as the goal. We didn't say this is what it has to be about. But most of the videos had that as an undercurring theme. And so students see this, and they get it, and it's natural to them. Let me end by saying uh, we believe at the Department of Education that technology is key to equity. We recently released a Dear Colleague letter from our Office of Civil Rights. What it says is when we look at doing investigations on whether there are civil rights issues, one of the things that we look at is disparity of technology. 
which may surprise some people if you're not thinking about how valuable technology is for uh, ensuring equity. And this one part that I will read here says, comparable access to technology tools given to teachers and students are something that we look at, along with how the tools are supported and implemented. We consider the number, type, and age of technology devices and the availability and speed of internet access. We take this very seriously. The next piece that you should be aware of is an initiative called the Connect Ed Initiative. This is announced by the president uh, about a year ago today in, uh, in Mooresville, North Carolina. And this is to address the fact that we had about 30% of schools across the country that had access to high-speed wireless in the classroom. That means 70% did not, which we actually believe is an equity issue. We believe that's a challenge because we don't think we can prepare students to thrive in a digital world and certainly compete in a globally connected world if they don't even have connectivity in their classrooms. This initiative has led to a huge amount of additional resources that have become available, $2 billion from the FCC to support school internet, $2 billion in private sector commitments, and by the way, some additional exciting uh, commitments that I think you'll see over the next week or so uh, to, to support that even more. And the last piece that I want to mention is uh, the Future Ready Pledge that we have going around. And so with these additional resources that have become available, we basically have said, look, we realize that you can't just put devices in place. You can't just power up a school and expect it to make a difference if you don't have learning leaders and teachers and principals and superintendents and parents and students all engaged in thinking about how to use the technology in order to close some of these persistent gaps. And so this Future Ready Pledge is a pledge that superintendents across the country are voluntarily taking as we speak, and a huge number have already signed it. And they've said, we're going to step up and make sure that we're using technology in ways that are closing these gaps. And then in addition, something cool started to happen. The students around the country started saying, we are going to actually show what this means to us to be future ready. And so students have been taking pictures that say, future ready is, and they show uh, what it means to them. Here's one that may be a little bit uh, easier to read. Uh, to end, my final thought is uh, this. Technology is an accelerator. Whatever we apply it to is going to accelerate. Right? That's what it does. Technology is neutral, it's not good, it's not bad, it's an accelerator. And if we choose to apply technology in ways that accelerate existing inequalities, then shame on us all. On the other hand, if we choose to realize the value that we hold dear in this country, a value that all students should have access to the same opportunity for learning, regardless of their zip code or income or anything else that would group some students to have less opportunity than others, if we decide that that's something that we truly care about and we use technology as a way to solve those challenges through the opportunities that I just mentioned, plus many, many others, then I believe that we have a tool that can change the world faster than anything else we've ever seen before. And that's the goal that we have. Those of us right here in this room, we're the ones that make that happen. Because if we drive that and keep that a central part of the agenda and a central part of the conversation, we change the world. It's as simple as that. Thank you very much.